Hello guys and welcome back to the weekly gaming news thing that I still don't really have a title for. Still don't have an intro for it either. <laughs> but this is episode two, I suppose you could call it. Um, we're recording this now, August the eighth. So there's definitely a lot of things that have been happening this week. We've had a ton of things to talk about leading into next gen. So let's just get into it, shall we? First things off, PlayStation had a state of play. A lot of people kicked off about it. Because there wasn't that much PS5 news. Now, Sony did come out already, like, days in advance and said, this is purely focusing on PS. what's on the PS4. There was actually quite a bit, well, not quite a bit, but a few PS5 things in there for people to, to touch on. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. But there's a lot of stuff I was really excited for. Most importantly, starting to show off with Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about... God damn time. <laughs> this is a game I'm totally excited for. Really, really am. It, it's been, it feels like forever since, forever since a, a Crash games came out, apart from the remastered. It feels like, like I can't even remember since there's been like a true successor to, to Crash Bandicoot Warped. And I like that they're going in that direction. They've, they've shown a few things in the trailer, which I'm really liking the look, look of. The color modes, uh, the... The, being able to play the whole game is Coco. There's there's a lot there that I'm really really excited about, as well as like so many other PS4 games that are still coming out uh, on PS Plus this month. There was Four Guys as well, which I've been playing the last couple of days with my daughter, and we've been having such an incredibly fun time with that. It may be something I'm gonna bring over to my Twitch channel to uh, maybe maybe stream an hour or two of of that. Uh, it's an incredibly fun fun game. So if you're PS Plus subscriber, go and grab that now. Believe me, you'll not regret. You'll not regret it. So, like I said, they showed off a load amount of games for this state of play, and it, it was it was generally it was really really good. Obviously, it's coming to the end of its lifespan. The pretty much the PS4 for most people that are going to jump on a PS5. So, I quite appreciate that they're showing the PS4 some love, letting people know as well that this system's not being ignored. There's still plenty to offer for the PS4 for the foreseeable future as we move into next gen. Now, we want to get into some other games as well. Uh, another kind of game that they showed off for the state of play, which um, which, which looks absolutely gorgeous as well, is Godfall. Godfall seems to be this hack and slash shoot. I'm not totally sure what Godfall completely is yet, um, but I do know that this is a complete next gen game built for the PS5. So... You know, you're not going to find this on PS4 and stuff like that. It's going to use uh, the PS5 advantages as much as it possibly can, and it looks like a it looks like a good game. I'm st still sort of a little bit skeptical with anything that Gearbox does at the minute. Uh, outside of the Borderlands series, for me, Gearbox it has been doing I wouldn't say brilliantly uh, for some things. Uh, I'm still rather stung and hurt from the Aliens Colonial Marines uh, fiasco. I don't think I'll ever get over that. Um, they kind of taught me not to get like way too overhyped for games, um, and then come cra come crashing down to earth. Um, but they, but the but generally Gearbox produce pretty pretty decent games. Um, yeah, with that being said, as well, we've got obviously rumors of another Xbox event as well sometime in august now the rumors that are going on is that this xbox event is finally going to be the price uh, maybe pre-orders open for the system but what a lot of people are saying as well is also for the xbox lockhart which is code name for the the small xbox that they've got planned the cheaper version the cheaper not as powerful as the series x uh next gen console and there's rumors like i said of crazy prices of 199 dollars Things like that. Whether or not it turns out to be that cheap, I don't know. Um, I pers like I said, personally, this is my own, obviously, subjective opinion here. I, I don't personally see the point of this console. If you're going to go next gen, you want to go next gen, next gen all the way. I appreciate that the price is cheaper. But if I had the choice between a, a, a next gen console that's going to that's gonna go all the whistles and bells and a half price console, which is kind of next gen, but not quite, I, I don't... I don't really see the point. I, 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 I personally, I don't really see the point. From a business perspective, though, obviously for casual gamers that don't want to spend 
like five hundred dollars, whatever the new console is going to cost to get into next next game gaming. I should. I suppose it's going to look good for all the casual gamers out there that maybe wouldn't invest in, in an Xbox to go and buy a cheaper version for like half the price or a fraction of the price of a Series X. It seems like a good business move. Um, how they maybe make money off this or something like that, I, I don't know. I do not know the logistics of it. Um, personally, I, I don't see the point of it. Uh, probably business sense, though, it probably makes sense that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll get a few of these million couple of these shipped definitely definitely talking about the talking about the xbox competitors ps5 as well switching back and forth here and this uh in this little chat rant thing uh there's been rumors obviously ps5 now has been on the construction line for a, a considerable amount of time now there's been lots of leaks of the the, the outer shell of the ps5 being detachable um as well as obviously people in factories and stuff holding ps5s so it's pretty much now a guarantee that these PS5s are on the construction line, probably being built and into mass production. I know that Sony have come out and said that they wanted to do 5 million PS5s out in the world for launch, uh, but they've recently come out and said that they want another 5 million PS5 by at least December time. So there's roughly going to be about 10 million PS5s out in the wild for launch. Um, that sounds like a lot, but realistically, I don't think it is. Um, Depending on how much these prices are of these consoles are going to cost, with obviously the uh, financial crisis of of what's going on in the world at the minute because of this virus. Um, how many people buy these consoles? I don't know. If it is is cheap and a lot of people go onto them, there's a there's been a lot of warnings that there's obviously there's going to be console shortages or it's predicted to be console short shortages. Um, so maybe. Not everybody can jump on the next-gen bandwagon uh, as soon as people would like. But uh, it's nice to know that Sony are trying to push as many out as they possibly can. Supply and demand. No, that's 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 all right. Uh, in other news as well, CD Projekt Red, the absolute awesome guys of gaming at the minute. I've uh, got nothing but nice things to say about CD Red. I've uh, just announced that... Cyberpunk 2077, The Night City Wire, Episode 2, will be on mon this coming Monday. Um, so this, they're going to take a look at more about the weapons of maybe a little bit more of the city. The I really enjoyed the first Night Wire. Um, I know a lot of people had a few issues with the brain dance segment, but I generally, generally enjoyed it. Uh, with lots of new footage, lots of new gameplay. And I, mean, I expect roughly the same here. Whether or not it'll be as long, I don't know. Uh, but any new footage, maybe a little mini trailer, minute trailer, something like that, would be amazing. I'm really looking forward to that. So if you're hyped for Cyberpunk 2077 like I am, then tune into that, Samurai. And that pretty much sums it up, guys. Um, yeah, I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, I, I still don't know kind of what I want this show to be. Uh, I'm just kind of winging it at this point. I did say in my last episode that uh, between scripted and unscripted, I would much prefer unscripted. I just believe it gives you that little bit more, um, not fr like friendliness between me, me and you. And you know, I, I, there's better sites out there, better channels than me that could do scripted stuff, uh, which is amazing to go and watch uh, for gaming news. But I hope you guys will come chill out, maybe even pick up something you didn't know here, and uh, yeah, have a good time. So with that being said, guys, this is Neon signing off. Uh, thank you for tuning in for episode two, and I'll see you next week on the Neon Gaming News Channel. Bye, guys.